Welcome to today's five-minute Bible study in the book of Philippians. Today we're beginning to look at Philippians chapter 3. Now I told you yesterday in the concluding part of that session that chapter 3 is sort of a postscript to Paul's letter. When it begins chapter 3, it's almost as if Paul is making his concluding remarks. And then something else comes up that he has to address. So all of chapter 3 is like a long P.S. Now, what do I say? It's it almost as if Paul was concluding his letter. Look at verse 1 of chapter 3. Paul says, Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. He reminds them again to be joyful in Jesus. Now, why do I say that's a concluding remark? Because that is exactly the way he concludes the letter. If you fast forward ahead to chapter 4, verse 4, when Paul actually does begin his concluding remarks, he says it again. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. See, that's his trademark way of closing out his letter. And then after that, he says, finally, whatever is true, whatever is right, do these things. In other words, he gives his final words. So it seems like as he started chapter 3, he was ready to give his concluding remarks, and then he realizes he has to say something else. I believe that before Paul concluded the letter, he received more news from Philippi. Perhaps another visitor from Philippi has come. But somebody has brought him a report that something is happening in the church that he must inform the believers about. And that something is that some false teachers have come to Philippi. Somebody has come bringing false teaching, and Paul considers those false teachers to be a great danger. And he must warn the Philippian believers. He must warn the Philippian church against these false teachers who have infiltrated their fellowship. That's what it says about them. We're in verse 2 of chapter 3. This is where the PS or the postscript begins. Paul says, watch out for those dogs, for those evildoers, for those mutilators of the flesh. Did you notice the change in tone? Verse 1, he says, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice always. It's good for me to tell you this. His, his tone, tone is joyful. And then he receives some kind of word about these false teachers, and he switches entirely and says, I've got to warn you about these false teachers because they are dogs and they are workers of evil. Now, when he refers to these false teachers as dogs, that is a term of reproach. Now, in our day, when we think of dogs, we usually think of our pets, and we have great affection for our pets. But in New Testament times, when they talk about dogs, they're not talking about a family pet. They're talking about wild dogs that are a pestilence in the community and a danger. And so when Paul says someone has come on you and they are dogs, he says these people are threatening your welfare. They are threatening your life in Christ. They are workers of evil. Now, who are these false teachers? Who are, are these teachers that Paul characterizes as dogs and as workers of evil? What are they teaching? that brings such a strong word of warning from Paul to the Philippians. Well, we get an idea of what they're teaching when he says they are mutilators of the flesh. They, they're asking you to do something to your body that Paul says is, I consider it to be mutilation, the way they're teaching it, and is a great danger to your spiritual life. That gives us an idea. Now, notice what else he says. Going on, he says, For it is we, that is we true believers, who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit, we who boast in Christ Jesus, we put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. So he identifies true believers as the true circumcision who put their confidence in the spirit and in faith in Jesus, not in something you do to the flesh. Now that tells us who these false teachers are. One of the opponents of Paul in the early church were a group of people that historians call the Judaizers. These were people who taught Gentile Christians that in order to be true believers in Christ, you have to first become Jewish. They said before you can become a believer in Christ, you must first convert to Judaism. And one of the marks of Judaism, obviously, is circumcision. So to these Gentile believers, they say, if you're going to be a true follower of Christ, you must be circumcised. You must become a Jew first. Then you can become a Christian. Now, Paul is saying, oh, no. We're not saved by anything we do. You don't have to be, if you're a Gentile, you don't have to become a Jew first. You don't have to be circumcised. All you have to do is believe in Christ. He says, real circumcision is spiritual. It is spiritual. It is believing in Jesus. So we who believe in Christ are the true circumcision. We put our confidence in the Spirit. But these Judaizers are asking you to 
physically be circumcised in order to be a Christian. That, Paul says, I consider to be mutilation of the flesh. Because you don't need that. All you need is faith in Jesus Christ. So the Judaizers were the legalists of Paul's day, teaching that you can only be saved by keeping the law, by performing certain works in addition to your faith. Paul says, oh no, we are saved simply by faith in Jesus Christ. Not by our works, not by legal observance, certainly not by being circumcised. Our true circumcision, the true mark of being a Christian, is faith in Christ and the Holy Spirit in our lives. And those who teach otherwise, they are workers of evil because they're leading you away from Jesus. They are dogs. Don't listen to their teaching and don't believe what they tell you. So Paul gives them a warning against these Judaizers and stresses that we are saved solely by faith in Jesus Christ, not by the works of our flesh or our earthly strength. We're saved only by faith in Christ. And to that I say, amen and amen. Now he's got a lot more to say about this as he He's going to spend the rest of chapter 3 stressing our salvation only comes through faith. He goes into great detail. We'll begin to look at that in our next session. So join us next time for our five-minute Bible study in the book of Philippians.